evening, Mayor Bogart, and Councilmember Madison, Councilmember Gordo, Councilmember Robinson, Councilmember Masuda. Name, Mermo. You're here for Mr. Beck. Domsky. What's your name? With Ms. Bagneris. C. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. Uh, please pass us on to Ms. Banneris, Mr. Tornick. Ms. McCoston is not here, and Mr. Holden. I'm here to read an order from Judge Ernest Robles of the Federal Bankruptcy Court. It's an order to restore debtor Deirdre Duncan to possession of real property at 409 Lola Avenue in Pasadena, California. I encourage you to read it. You should already be aware of it. The court finds that an automatic stay arose upon the filing of debtor's bankruptcy petition on March 9, 2011 that applied to the debtor's possessory interest in real property located at 409 Lola Avenue in Pasadena, California, pursuant to Supreme Court case Butner v. United States bankruptcy case in Ray Butler. The court finds no cause existed nor exists to annul the automatic stay pursuant to N. Ray Feldstadt and Ray National Environmental Waste Corp. and Ray Schwartz. Although the court finds that there may be cause or is cause to grant prospective relief, the court finds no cause exists to waive the 14-day hold on this relief from stay. The court holds that acts in violation of the automatic stay are void, not merely voidable. The court holds that void acts have no force or effect and cannot be cured or ratified. In Ray Schwartz. I encourage you to read that decision. The court holds that the automatic stay imposes on non-debtor parties, non-debtor parties, which includes each and every one of you, an affirmative duty of compliance. That's an affirmative duty of compliance, meaning you have a duty to comply. The court orders that all acts in violation of the automatic stay that arose or arise from or were or are related to the debtor's possessory interest in the real property of 409 Lola Avenue in Pasadena, California, were and are void with no legal force nor effect from the period beginning on or after March 9, 2011, until 14 days after entry of this order. The court orders that debtor Deirdre Duncan be immediately restored to possession of the real property located at 409 Lola Avenue in Pasadena, California, so ordered by Judge Ernest Robles, June 3, 2011. I don't know what he's talking about. Even we got the order, I don't see our name on it. Nick, could we ask the city attorney's office to look into this? I assume, I mean, maybe the assertion is that non-debtor parties is the entire world, and therefore we have something to do, but I didn't hear what it is we're supposed to do. There was apparently an eviction, but the city's not the owner of the property, nor is it involved in the action between the debtor and the creditor, so I'm not quite sure what's going on. You'll take it and look at it? Yes, I will. Thank you. To have occurred, or almost certainly to have occurred, at Desert Area Armory Reserve Center, first of all, there's an underground storage tank, which has never been investigated, yet it's on the maps on the city site. Other buildings on the site were a painting shop and an automobile maintenance facility and an automobile wash rack. In my experience on military facilities, every underground storage tank has leaked or had material spilled around it. Every paint shop has had hazardous materials released, principally trichloroethylene, which is a carcinogen, and paint thinners such as toluene and ethylbenzene. The fuel in the fuel tank would have been leaded gasoline, so there's probably tetraethyl lead in the soil and groundwater. And these things have not been addressed. Why is this a problem to the city? The Army is obliged to clean these things up through all of eternity. The problem that the city would face is if the city took this for a public use without cleaning up and someone became ill or got cancer, God forbid, they could sue, but they cannot sue the Department of Defense, but they can sue the city of Pasadena for negligence. The solution to this problem is quite simple. The hazardous materials group within the fire department needs merely to write a letter to either the Regional Water Quality Control Board or the Department of Toxic Substances Control.
compensation for these people suffering and, and hopefully make some difference and some impact about corporate America not being able to deceive us and that we could begin to clean up this site was, was just awesome. In order to minimize the impacts of these activities, contaminated soil is separated from clean soil. Frequent lab tests are done to ensure all environmentally contaminated soils are removed. To learn more on how environmental issues impact real estate, watch Fisher Environmental's other YouTube videos. For more information, visit us at fisherenvironmental.com or call 905-475-7755. Regular poisons are put out there, and what you'll have to do. And it talks about a green element. You're going to encourage raptors and owls and things. No, you're not. No, you're going to bring down coyotes and predators, and they're going to get secondary poisoning from consuming these uh, these wild animals that that uh, that have eaten some of the pesticide baits, or that have been uh, have been killed by gas treatments in their burrows. The, the use. Uh, the, the placement of soccer fields in Hahamunga Watershed Park is inappropriate. And I don't appreciate the fact that uh, the great need for soccer and other playing field recreation is holding a wild area hostage. And that seems to be what's happening here. And if you put in plastic turf, that's just as bad because then you get the bisphenol leaching into the watershed during rain and you've got a very, very expensive project indeed putting in plastic grass in a wildlife refuge. So there's many other things I could say, but I think that point hasn't been mentioned, and I agree with all the prior uh, speakers. So please do not put these soccer fields in. And by the way, the north uh, field doesn't have a name because it was kind of slipped in there at 1 in the morning when the public left another public council meeting, and uh, I don't think the prior data supports the fact that uh, it was equal between soccer field proponents and opponents. I think the vast amount of data in the past dating back to 1982 when I started tracking Hahamanya Watershed Park planning, I believe uh, the public has always opposed soccer fields in Hahamanya Watershed Park. Thank you. Thank you. To actually wanting to be the generation of engineers that solves the problem in a better way, with less maintenance, with reverence to nature and legally protected habitat areas. There is much innovation being offered to them but that innovation needs room to be implemented, and you've got all of these big plans happening in Hahamunga. How do you mitigate or compensate for the loss of species in Hahamunga and the Royal Seco? Just replace and replant them? With such a delicate ecosystem, all we can do is protect the conditions for healthy species to thrive, including us. We can't force them to grow or nest. This is the same out of touch with the natural world thinking that has led to genetically engineered crops, genetically engineered animals. Will environmentalists end up accepting genetically altered species to exist in the polluted atmosphere we've created for our children? Will we accept thousands of trucks moving sediment as long as they're not diesel trucks? Will we accept compensation as long as it's invested within the limits of where the first massacre took place? Stop, Pasadena City Council. Do not continue to stay in the short-sighted thinking of the original real estate developers, developers of the 1900s. They sold lush Green Valley property in what was really a dry riverbed called the Arroyo Seco, subject to occasional catastrophic Torrance. They've made their fortunes and moved on. But well, we're still here. Thank you.